Greetings. This is Pastor Dave, and it's, uh, it's Wednesday, and I'm at my office at Hernando United Methodist Church, and I want to bring you the, the hump day message for today. We're uh, looking at a message called, In the Meantime, Do and Say Good. And before we get started, I'd like to, like to just ask if you'd join me for a word of prayer. Loving God, we come today, and, and, and we know that you're always with us. Uh, you, 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 you bless us in so many ways. You, you guide us. You, you uplift us. You keep us encouraged, and, and you just show us, Lord, that they really are in charge, ultimately, ultimately, uh, if we stay with you, we follow you and, and let you take us, uh, that we'll, we'll end up where you need us to be. And we just thank you for that so much. So bless this time together and continue to bless all of us out there. Be with those who are sick and hurting and, and those that are recovering from procedures and those who will be having them. And be with our church, even though we aren't all together quite yet in sitting in chairs. We know that we're all together in spirit and in our hearts. So watch over us and, and we, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, so, so I know that there's a lot of uh, issues that are out there to stress about uh, these days, and, and I, you know, I, I don't really need to make a list of those for you and list them off because each of us has our own list. Uh, I want you to know that, that I do take all of these things very seriously. I pray about them, I struggle with them, just like you do, I, I'm sure. Uh, and, and I have to try to, if I can, to, to keep the same mind in me and the same attitude in me as that of Jesus. And, uh, you know, as Paul says in Philippians 2, uh, to be of a like mind of Christ. And, then, and, and, and to be like Jesus, we have to remember that he was humble, that he was a servant, that, that he brought comfort and, and healing and teaching. Um, and, and he lived out the, the very concept of loving our neighbors and, and loving God. He died for me. And I, I, that's good news. And, and I so appreciate that as he died for each one of us and for everybody. Um, and I have to admit, you know, it is hard sometimes uh, uh, to, to not get a little frustrated about things and that kind of thing and uh, have to work at it. And why is that? It's because I, I'm human too. Um, but, but this is, I think, important for me, that God blesses me in many, many ways. And uh, he helps me to remember that, that, that God called me to do something with my life. And whenever I, I find myself you know, struggling, I can always go back to God who, who, who's with me, who guides me, and who even instructs me at night, as it says in Psalm 16, uh, to... to to do what God would have me do, to be his spiritual leader, to be one of his uh, ordained ministers. And, and that's a blessing for me. And uh, I need to continually be focusing on the blessings that God gives me and to be focusing on doing and saying good in the name of Jesus, the things that glorify God. And I just need to, to be always focused on those things to help me. But, and and I, th I thought I might take a moment here just because we've been going through this, this time a little bit longer, I think, than what a lot of us expected. But, but you know, there, there are some blessings as we get started here that I would like to share with you. Uh, Gene and I are blessed that, that I've been reappointed and, and that we'll be, continue to be here. Uh, and, you know, I truly uh, believe that we're going to get through the challenges that we face in ministry together, and, uh, and we're going to do that with God's help, and, and everything's going to just turn out not just okay, but better and better and better. And so that, that's a blessing for us. You know, it, it, it may seem, uh, this may sound weird, <laughs> but I get a blessing for preparing these hump day messages. It, it kind of helps me to, to, to pray about where your hearts are at, where my heart is at, where, where we might connect, and where you might get some, something fresh maybe in the middle of the week that you can ponder, that you can think about, and, and just disconnect with. So I really hope you're still enjoying these. Uh, if not, let me know. <laughs> but uh, uh, um, you never know what you're going to get, right? And I think that's part of it. And sometimes I need to express something that God puts on my heart. And, but, but mostly I just take a chance to connect with you and, and, and hopefully we can bring something fresh you know, to think about for the week. Uh, I received a blessing 
uh, when God shows me, like happened for our Bible study, we, we were ready to start the new Bible study, and I was researching and praying about it, and, and all of a sudden I came across the Bible study about anxiety uh, and, and the ways that God comforts and encourages us in, in, our, in our times when we experience anxiety. And we already know that there's a lot of that going around. And, and it helps me, and it, hopefully those who participate also. So if you want to come and join us, it's a Zoom Bible study. Just let me know, and I'll, I'll send you the Zoom invite. Also, I get a blessing uh, when I work with the team here that uh, prepares this online worship every week for you. Uh, we do that so that you can be safe at home and that, that you can still worship as if we were at the church. And, and uh, you get a worship packet, of course, that, that, that has uh, the order of service and the scripture along with some other things. And if you will, it's kind of almost like a little weekly newsletter. So uh, don't get overwhelmed by the size of it. Just kind of work your way through it. And understand, your first part has the order of service with the scripture and the things that are happening in the service, which is what they're not, you know, kind of succinct there. The scripture and then uh, prayer requests, different things like that, which are important to you. So, so spend some time with that. But it's a blessing, and we're all blessed that we can do that. Uh, you know, we, this Monday we, was a blessing for me when, when folks were bringing by uh, food for the food drive, and, and I was able to, to provide them communion and, and tell them the words, you know, that God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for you and then to receive the, the body and the blood of Christ in communion. And, and that was, that's always a blessing for me to be able to, uh, to do that kind of thing. And this, we're the closest to God when we're in the sacrament. So amen and amen. Now, so here, here is part of the thing I know that, that that's, uh, people are thinking about. So I've been looking through a lot of stuff through the few days, and I found here this thing. It's called decisive. Remember, it used to have the magic eight ball, and you'd, you'd ask it a question. Uh, this is from Chip and Dan Heath, but it's a business thing. And so you, you, you ask it a question, and you shake it up, and you turn it upside down, and then you get some kind of an answer here. You know, wisdom from the ball or whatever. So the big question that we're trying to deal with here is how do we create a blessing for everybody and, and find a way to get back into the sanctuary to worship safely, uh, to not to be in, in harm's way. Uh, and so here's what I'm doing. I'm using the decisive ball to help me decide. So you ready? So here's the question. Is it going to be easy to get everybody back into church and worship again? You ready? <laughs> you know what it says? Good luck with that, it says. But I know it's going to be okay because everyone's going to be committed to making this happen. So it's not that we need luck. We just, we just need to work together to make that happen. All right, any other questions? Um, Are we still going to be able to share love for each other and the love of God in a special way? Absolutely, yes. So amen to that, hey? Okay, so that's probably enough questions for now. But I do want to take just a moment before I, I do want to share a couple scriptures with you. But I want to, I want to tell you and bring you up to speed. So last week we saw the picture of the Jesus as our seatmate. So, so hear this now, because this is a little bit going to be important information to you. Uh, uh, we're no joking aside here, okay? We're working on this. Uh, we, we, we don't want anyone to be in harm's way, so we need everyone to cooperate, and we're following the guidelines that are coming from the conference. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, we'll be able to get back together soon. Uh, by prayer now and manipulation of seating, it looks like we're going to be able to see about 70 people in the worship service. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll accommodate couples. And remember, if it ain't like it used to be, Jesus is your seatmate. Uh, just, you know, uh, we're going to get through this. And then we'll be able to worship together. It'll be a little bit different feel, a little different look, but we'll be together in, this, in the service space. And then we'll, you, we've gotten responses to the questionnaire, so you know some of the things that we're struggling with. That first question, is, will you come back? It means, will you come back in covenant to do what we have to do to have 
worship in an appropriate, safe way where, no, where we don't put anyone in harm's way. Now note this now, be thinking about this. So when you come in, this is going to be different. You're going to enter on the east side of the building. So you're going to enter through the east side double doors. And you'll be able to pull up and, and drop off on the east side if needed there. If you need to pull your car up there, we're going, to, we're going to trim the tree and get that worked out. But, you know, there'll be ushers there to help you. Then when we exit, you'll be exiting out the west side, which might, you might think of as the, what we normally have used as an entranceway, but now will be the exit. So the traffic flow will come in from the east. You'll be seated in your seats. You'll be dismissed, and you'll go out through the exit door. So we don't have people kind of uh, uh, walking into each other and that kind of thing. So work with us. We're really trying to, to do that. And, and you're going to ask you, please abide by the covenant, which you'll receive, to be healthy, to wear a mask, to sanitize your hands, to be escorted to a seat, and maintain distancing. And then you'll be dismissed by row and exit through the west side double doors. So one more question. Is this going to work? With God's help, it's all going to work out. So good amen to that. Just real quick, uh, I, I wanted to share the scripture because this week I've been, I've been reading through 1 Peter. Now, tell me why I just picked 1 Peter to read. But it's a good, it's a good letter and it's a, it, that Peter writes. You know, uh, uh, I want to also mention that online worship is still available there. It's going to still be available. But, so I'm reading through Peter, and, and I, I come up with this, the idea that, you know, in the meantime, do and say good. And this is why. Uh, you know, uh, if you read through Peter, he's got some good teaching there. And in and, and, and early times, there was, the churches struggled. They, they were oppressed. They had a lot of challenges that they were facing, and, and, and a lot of Christians were suffering. And, and he needed to make, kind of give them some uplifting word. And, and so we find exhortations there for faithful living in a society that really was ungodly around them. We find strong focus on the salvation that, that, it, that is the good news about Jesus' suffering and, and the ultimate sacrifice that he gives in dying for us, and for our, and that we might know salvation. And he, and he offers hope to those suffering for Christ's sake. So I'm going to read you these, these scriptures from the third chapter of uh, 1 Peter, and starting at verse 8. And so he's talking about the kind of way that you should be thinking. Uh, finally, if you, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, Repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. And then he goes on, you know, and, and, and quoting uh, the Old Testament, they must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So consider where your mind is in these times. I know as we sit around the house, as we find ourselves frustrated, our minds start to wander, and we need to get ourselves back focused, you know, um, the best we can on Christ. So, so, so here now he continues uh, at verse 13 about um, suffering for doing good. It's, it says, Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats, and do not be frightened. But if your hearts revere Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and with respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, and the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. So the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. 
read through these. There's a lot of instruction in, in Peter. But I just wanted to bring you that because I, 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 I find myself, I need I needed something to be in the meantime here. I need to be doing good things. And I need to be saying good things. And I, I need to be constantly reminding myself that I need to keep in my heart and in my mind that Jesus is Lord. And, and I need to claim that continually that Jesus is the Lord of my life. And I, I encourage you to let Jesus be the Lord of your life. And then, you know, always be ready to, to share your hope and faith with others. I, there's no question in my mind, because I have a gift of faith, that I believe that God is always going to win. God is always going to work it out. And so ha have that same sense that having that faith in Jesus as your Lord, keeping the promises, that's the hope we have, that one day we'll all be together at that heavenly banquet with in the very presence of Jesus Christ, with all the communion of saints, and what an incredible hope that is. And God always wins. And God is always with us. And God, that's a great hope we have. So share that and, and help others understand that too. Uh, you know, have this, this reverence for God and Jesus as Lord. Uh, and have a readiness to, to share one's hope. But I know that sometimes we want to snap at something at someone, but, but with love and tenderness is, is what he says. Share, share that sense of, you know, God loves you. God is here for you. God will take care of you. And, and you have that, uh, that promise of hope that you get. So, so you just need to make some decisions now as to how you will continue to know Christ as your Lord, how you will live that out, and, and what you will do and what you will say in your current situation that will take you into the new situation. And remember that Jesus died for the forgiveness of sins, that he, he died for all people. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but by the grace of God to save the world. So, amen and amen. In the meantime, uh, before Christ returns, Share the good news, glorify God, and do and say good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen.